This item right here has put this box in my number one spot for the wizarding trunk. Hey, Harry Potter fans, Peter Kenneth here. Welcome back to the Potter Collector Channel, where we are a community of collectors. Today we have the next box in the Magical Lessons series from The Wizarding Trunk. The Wizarding Trunk is sponsoring this video, but all opinions are my own. Now, I have been seeing reviews about this box. I've not seen what's inside, but the reviews are in, and everyone that I've seen has said it's the best box from the Wizarding Trunk. So I'm excited to see what is inside of this box that is making everyone so happy. And the thing that's really crazy about this is this is a heavy, heavy box. It must be packed with magic. One thing that I know is inside the box is the book cover. If you're new to the Potter Collector channel, first of all, welcome. Or if you're new to the Wizarding Trunk Magical Lesson boxes, in their current theme, they are including book covers or dust jackets that are designed by Danny at Wizardry Workshop. And they turn the US hardcover edition books with artwork by Mary Grand Pre into magical textbooks. Here's what one of those textbooks looks like. This was from the previous box. This was the fifth cover in the series and it fits Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Absolutely stunning. I mean, foiling out the nose. Look at how shiny this is. It makes the Niffler in you very excited when you see all of that shiny foiling. So this box contains the book cover that will fit Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. I can't wait to see what it is. Now the Wizarding Trunk was planning to do books one through seven with these magical book covers but they've just announced that they are not stopping them after this magical lessons theme. They said that they are coming out with six more book covers. So even though I don't consider it canon, they're coming out with a book cover for Cursed Child, both of the Fantastic Beast screenplay books, and the three Hogwarts library books. So Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, Quidditch Through the Ages, and The Tales of Beetle the Bard. So six more book covers, six more textbooks are on the way in future Wizarding Trunk boxes. I'm very excited about that and can't wait to see what they come up with. All right, let's take a look at the box. We see the Owlry here and it says the Owlry right there, presented by the Wizarding Trunk. Magical post, fragile or fragile, magical delivery. If you don't know the word fragile, it's a word I randomly made up, which means a fragile and magical item. Fragile. All right, let's open this box up. Dun 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 dun, the box has been opened. All right, we have the cheat sheet on top, so we're gonna put that aside. Now, I know the theme of this box. The two lessons are divination and history of magic. So that will be interesting to see what they come up with. We have a shirt on the top here, and this is a Gildan soft style ring spun shirt. It is very soft. You guys know I'm very particular about my shirts. And it looks like it's not screen printed or just lightly screen printed, which is nice because it doesn't mess with the flow of the shirt. All right, let's take a look at what it is. 1709 Warlocks Convention. Okay, so this has a history of magic theme to it. The Warlock Convention of 1709. A lot of important stuff happened there, if I remember correctly. I don't know exactly where or when it's mentioned in the book, but I remember this being an important convention when it comes to wizarding law and that sort of a thing. Very cool design. I like the simple gray shirt. You guys know I love simple gray, black, white, but we've got to get this shirt on. Very soft indeed. I like the artwork on here. It sits in a nice location. It's not too high, not too low. This is definitely something I could see myself wearing at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in the future. All right, lots of schnigglies here. And we have a little pouch, a little purple pouch. Feels like something metal inside, maybe a coin. No, it's not in the shape of a coin though. It is, oh, I think it is a coin. It says on this side, no, with an hourglass and a bunch of snakes. And then when you flip it over, it says yes. Okay, this has to do with divination. I'm guessing this is like a coin you would use for decision making. So should I continue making Harry Potter videos? Yes, it said yes. So this is a fun item, very nicely made, very high quality. The Wizarding Trunk does really nice stuff when it comes to metal items. It's heavy, the finish on it is really nice. I love the 3D effect that both sides, the front and the back give off. And I like that they didn't make it a, a round coin. It, it, it's more interesting this way to have it in an oddball shape. All right, there is a white box in here. Let's see, oh. 
This might be what's so heavy. This is a really heavy item. I know exactly what this is. What would be heavy and have a divination theme? I guarantee you that this is a crystal ball. It is indeed a crystal ball. And oh my goodness. The Grim is inside of the crystal ball. The Grim is 3D etched into this crystal ball. Oh my goodness. Is this a cool item? All right, not only is it cool, but if you hold it farther away from you, oh, that's creepy. That is really creepy. If it's held far away, you can see the reflection of the different items around you in the crystal ball, but then there's this dog staring at you out of the center. I don't know if the camera's gonna catch it, but I can tell you in person, this is really cool and really creepy. This is going to be an amazing item to display on the shelves. I'm seeing why people are freaking out about this box. Super heavy, the 3D etching is really nice. I mean, this is like a full-size crystal ball too. They could have gone with like a teeny tiny glass ball and it still would have been cool, but they went with something more full-size and that is impressive and that just goes to show that the wizarding trunk is all about quality. We haven't even gotten to the book cover yet. I see a pin. So we've got to open up the pin. You guys know I love pins. It is 18th century Goblin Rebellion. It's Professor Bins behind his desk and he's teaching about the 18th century Goblin Rebellion. On the right side of him are pictures of the four Hogwarts founders, Godric Gryffindor, Salazar Slytherin, Helga Hufflepuff, and Rowena Ravenclaw. And then he's surrounded with books and other things to help him teach in his class. This is a fun pin and something that we haven't really seen from the Wizarding Trunk in the past. It shows a, a scene from a lesson at Hogwarts, and I love that. Really nice size. I mean, it's like an oversized pin. It's a double clasp pin. Wizarding Trunk logo on the back. And I also really like the packaging that the pin is on. Very cool, nicely designed card with the Wizarding Trunk logo. It's almost like a little story window pin. Okay, now I'm like, what the heck else could be in this box? Because so far it's been awesome. All right, looks like we have like a potion perhaps. No, it's a bath product, alchemy for the skin, the inner eye, self-awareness and emotional healing oil. The ingredients are quartz crystal infused rice bran oil with essential oils of patchouli, lemongrass, lavender, orange, pine and musk and there are little crystals in inside of the oil it's like a citrus musk scent smells very nice it's not something i would probably use i don't usually use bath products like this or you know oils like this that come from subscription boxes but some of you may really like it and i have to say it smells pretty good all right what is next we have something in a little package here it looks like a necklace like a crystal necklace Oh no, this isn't a necklace. This is, I don't know what these are called. I'm not a very good divination person, but it's one of those like, you put it over a map and you twirl it and wherever it stops, that's where you're supposed to go or something like that. So it's one of those things. It's not actually made out of crystal. This is plastic, but it looks like crystal. There are some flakes in there, some gold flakes that makes it look like it's a quartz crystal. And then it's attached to this silver chain with a little bead at the end. And yeah, I don't know what this is called, but we'll look at the information card and I'm sure that the name of this item will be in that information card. All right, there are two big boxes and one little box. I'm gonna open up the little box first. And this is, oh, nice. Okay, I was a little worried when I saw a crystal ball did not come with a stand. Of course, the wizarding trunk thought about a stand. And this isn't just a like plastic stand. This is made out of metal. Nice little design on it. And let's see what it looks like on the stand. This is going to be creepy when it's displayed on the shelves, I'm telling you. From a distance, it's like, is there something in that crystal ball? And then you look up close and it's like, oh my goodness, it's the Grim. Wow, this is quite the box so far. We have a small brown box here. And, oh, please have the Grim inside. All right, this is what I'm looking at, a teacup. Oh my goodness, it's got the Grim. But oh my goodness, the Grim is inside. But look at this tea cup. You want to hear what quality sounds like? This is a beautiful, beautiful piece. Okay, here's the grim inside. So you can finish your tea 
and discover that you have the omen of death. But you had a delicious cup of tea, so you can be happy about it. This is a stunning item. This, this may be my favorite so far. Like, this is something you would see from the Noble Collection, a replica teacup from Prisoner of Azkaban. This is really beautiful. The one thing, though, now that I'm looking at it up close, is you can kind of see where the design was cut off at the base. I wish that there was no cutoff point that it just kind of flowed into the white of the cup. I mean, it's not something that is going to come off. It's not like a sticker strip or something. It's actually painted on to the cup itself, but there's a very clear line. And that may be a design choice they made, but from far away, like you can't really tell, but really nice item. <gasps> My dear, you have the Grim. Wow, what a box. All right, there's a big box here. I'm gonna wait to open that, but we have a box of tarot cards, the Green Witch Tarot. Now, I don't really believe in tarot cards personally, but I'll show you a couple of them. Here's the front of the box and the back, and then it's just a bunch of, of cards. And let's see, this one says the Green Man. Here's the Witch. So I'm not sure if the Wizarding Trunk has designed these cards. I think we'll find out when we look at the information sheet. We've got to open up this box. This box is staring me in the face. It's wrapped up in purple tissue paper. It's a potion, I think. Yes, it is a potion. So I agree that this box was really good. The teacup, the crystal ball, and then of course the book cover we know is gonna be fantastic. I didn't think that this was my favorite box from the Wizarding Trunk just based on those items. Really, really strong box. This item right here has put this box in my number one spot for the Wizarding Trunk. It is a potion, Daydream Potion, Weasley's Wizard Wheezes exclusive Daydream Potion. The perfect potion that you would take for a History of Magic class, which of course is mentioned in the Harry Potter books. I wish you guys could be seen and holding this potion right now. It is designed to perfection. Everything from the color choices to the color of the wax to this Weasley's Wizard Weezes logo double... It's metal. <laughs> it's metal! I thought this was plastic! This Weasley's logo W is made out of metal. It's purple and orange and it gives like a pearlized effect. Glitter in the center. That label is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. The potion color, there's nothing I would change about this. Absolutely nothing I would change about this. Oh my goodness, the Wizarding Trunk did it. So my favorite box was the Headmaster box, and now my favorite box is Divinations and History of Magic. This is now the box to beat. Wow, this potion is stunning. This is not only the best potion that I've seen from the Wizarding Trunk, this is the best potion that I've seen from any subscription box. If I saw this at the Wizarding World of Harry Potter or somewhere online, I would pay good money to purchase this. I mean, I don't think I need to tell you guys what my favorite item is. I mean, that potion is ridiculously good. If the Wizarding Trunk has any of these available for sale, I suggest you purchase one. You are going to love it. So they sometimes sell some of their extra items from boxes. You can check out all of those items in the online shop on their website. Check the description down below for a link. And also the coupon code keep collecting 10 will save you 10% on any of those items. But wow, this potion is beautiful. All right, let's finish off this box because we still have the book cover to look at. But first, there is a print of some kind. It's a print about the Warlocks convention. Oh, it's it opens. A program for the Wizard Convention. So on the inside it says, Official Agenda of 1709 International Warlock Convention. According to Wizard Laws and Traditions, decisions made at the convention by popular vote are final and may not be amended unless disputed in Supreme Wizard Court. The Order of Business, Dragon Breeding Restrictions, Trade Categorization of Magical Creatures, Ban on Experimental Breeding, Non-Human Wand Use Restrictions, Revisit Class A and C of non-tradable materials. Flying Carpet Embargo. Establishing a communication with non-magical authority. And magic use and age restrictions. Okay, I love this item because it is cohesive with this item. So it's almost like, you know, you took home souvenirs from 
the 1709 Wizard Convention. You took home one of the graphic tees and brought your program and you're gonna save them for memories. Like I love cohesiveness when it comes to subscription boxes and these two items do just that. And beautifully designed. I know that Danny at Wizardry Workshop has been doing a lot of designing for the wizarding trunk and I'm guessing that he designed this. This has Danny written all over it. All right, last but not least is the book cover right here and all right, I see some stars on here, so I'm guessing it has a divination theme to it. There is red foil on this book cover. Wow, is that beautiful? Oh my goodness, the foiling is out of control. The Niffler in me is literally freaking out. Okay, the secrets of Centaurian divination. That's clever. Okay, so this is, you know, like the secrets of centaurs and how they predict the future and their kind of take on divination. And it's by Cairo Medius. Take a look at this. Is that not stunning or what? It has a very Greek look to it. I love the red flames. The colors on this are just beautiful. It looks like an old book. And don't get me started on foil. I mean, look at that foil. All right, let's turn my copy of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince into this divination textbook. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off the Half-Blood Prince dust jacket. I'm gonna lay this down, put the spine in the center, wrap in this end paper and this side. Make sure that the spine is centered. And there you have it. We have just turned Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince into a divination textbook. It has a somewhat simplistic design, which is nice. So it makes it feel a little bit older. The spine is great. And then the back cover with this kind of design, the symbol that is on every one of Danny's book covers. So I'm wondering if this is kind of his signature or something. And take a look at the flaps on the inside. Really nice design with the stars and the centaurs and the different shapes. And red is a smart color for this when it comes to a centaurian divination book because the centaurs rely on Mars a lot, which is a red planet. So great use of red on this book. Now, when it comes to the previous book covers, I will be showing all of one through seven in the next video, which will be the last lesson box. So we will receive the book cover for Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows, and then I'll show you what all seven of them look like together. And I'm even more excited because it won't be the end of the book covers. Now I'm gonna have to get a copy of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. Wow, what a box. Let's take a look at the information sheet. Oh, I think these two items go together. It has rephrase, yes, maybe, yes, rephrase, no, maybe, no. I think you're supposed to go like, you know, like this or something and then it lands on one. All right, let's take a look at the info sheet. The Wizarding Trunk, Divinations and History. Number one, The Secrets of Centaurian Divination. This book cover was created by Danny at Wizardry Workshop and fits the sixth American hardback edition. Number two, The Crystal Ball. This crystal ball shows a glimpse into the future. What does your future hold? Sunshine, happiness, darkness? It's the Grimm, so I don't think sunshine or happiness are in the future. Number three, classroom pin. This could possibly be the most boring class at school, but everyone needs to learn their history. Designed by J.P. Missile Crow. Divination's coin. Having some trouble making a tough decision? Give this coin a toss and it will help you on your way. The yes side includes a star which symbolizes good luck and butterflies which symbolize success and pleasure. The no side depicts an hourglass which means imminent danger and snakes which are a bad omen and to take caution. Warlock Convention's shirt. This shirt was only available at the convention in the 1700s. The shirt was designed for us by Danny at Wizardry Workshop. Daydream Potion. This potion is great for escaping one of the most boring classes you will attend. This is the first product you will receive from our new Witter Shins shop for tricks and treats. I don't know what that means, but I think it means that the Wizarding Trunk is putting out a whole series of tricks and treat items from this new shop that they've made up. That's very exciting. And the Daydream Potion was designed by Danny at Wizardry Workshop. Number seven, Rose Quartz Chip Pendulum. Use this pendulum with the back of your spoiler sheet to receive some answers that you may otherwise have trouble devising yourself. Tea leaves, tea cup. Oh look, you finished your tea. Take a look and see what your future holds. Be sure to spin the cup and decipher what image that you see most clearly. And thank you for taking the blue cup this time. 
the pink cups really are my favorite. <laughs> That's a funny nod to when Neville breaks the teacup. Number nine, the inner eye oil. This oil is used to promote self-awareness and emotional healing. It is made with all natural ingredients and infused with quartz chips. This was created for us by Alchemy for the Skin. Warlock Convention Agenda and Itinerary. If you are interested in what was covered at the Warlocks Convention, you will find all that information here. This agenda was created for us by Danny at Wizardry Workshop. Green Witch Tarot Card Deck. Tarot cards are used in divinations, specifically cartomancy, yet another way to help you divine what the future holds. And they've given us the theme for the next box, which will be Defense Against the Dark Arts and Alchemy Lessons. Wow, what? a box and i think this is the first lesson box that the book cover was not my favorite item it's definitely in my top a lot i don't even know if it's in my top three it's not it's not in my top three how is that possible number one without a doubt no questions asked the daydream potion stunning product number two is the teacup replica the blue teacup replica with the grim inside really well made this is going to display really, really nicely, and I think it is food safe, too. Third favorite item is this crystal ball. Absolutely genius the way that they did this, and also very creepy the way that they did this. I mean, all these items were fantastic. The only one that I'm like, eh, about is that oil. What about you guys? What did you think? What were your favorites? What were your least favorites? Were you as surprised as I was to see these items? Let me know in the comments down below. If you would like to subscribe to The Wizarding Trunk, check the description down below. There's a link Link, as well as a coupon code, which will save you 10%. That coupon code is keep collecting 10. Now, I have to talk to you for a second. The Wizarding Trunk informed me that the next few boxes are not to be missed. They're coming out with a Villains and Dark Artifacts box, a box featured around the Order and the Army, a Wizarding Tournament box, and others. Now, in the Villains and Dark Artifacts box, I guessed one of the items that they were going to be including, and I asked for a spoiler. They sent me a picture of one of the items. All I will say is it is a full-size replica. And let me tell you, this full-size replica is not one to be missed. This is an item that I have not seen done before, and I guarantee you, you guys are going to flip out when you see it too. I cannot wait to have it in my hand and actually look at it. So when they put these boxes on sale, don't miss it. So if you would like to subscribe to the Wizarding Trunk, get in now, check the description down below for a link. They are telling me specifically that these next boxes that are coming up are better than this one here. And I thought that the Headmaster's box couldn't be topped. Well, it's just been topped. So I guess the next few boxes are gonna top this one too. But we will find out when the owls arrive with the boxes. If you have any questions about Harry Potter or collecting, feel free to leave a comment down below. You can also join the Potter Collector community on Instagram at the Potter Collector or on Twitter at Potter Collector. Now it's time to like, comment, subscribe, and until next time, keep collecting. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, welcome. You can subscribe right up here. You can also look at some previously posted content down here. If you have any questions about Harry Potter books or collecting, please feel free to contact me. I'm always happy to help. But for now, I must go. See you next time. Whoa, where'd he go?